Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us, uh, uh, for joining Pond the Politic and joining us on this wonderful Sunday. It's a rainy Sunday in South Africa. My name is Tandolo Tugatlanga Umtungwa, Biongo Yomalinga Undima, Unkumbuzo, who welcomes you to yet another episode of Pond the Politic. Before we can even go anywhere, you must uh, uh, ensure that you follow us on our YouTube page, including the Facebook page, and including the Twitter page, including the Instagram, TikTok, and any other social media platform that we are having. <clears throat> uh, as I have already said that uh, we welcome you to this wonderful, wonderful Sunday. So today we are going to be having a discussion about a various, uh, a various things that speaks to the politics of um, South Africa and the politics of, um, of, of the world. And unfortunately, the reality is that the uh, majority of people have not understood um, how, the, um, how the global politics have, um, have, have or are beginning to shape even the politics of, uh, of of these countries, um, you, you may you you will talk about South Africa in our instance. How the politics of um, um, the, the the global politics have had a negative or an impact. Sorry, if if I were to say, have got an impact on how politics are done in 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 in, in the world. But secondly, there is something that for me, especially who is a, a political participant in South Africa, um, I, I find very, very, very in, interesting. And I hope that you, you would also find that um, interesting as well. So don't you find it a little bit exhausting that the type of, um, the type of politics that are taking place in, in our country, in, in South Africa, um, that they are, it's either they are, exhausting or either they um they are confusing if one were if one were to say in because i don't know what else how else can i can i can i can i can i can i define them other than to say that uh, maybe they, they are these politics are um are exhausting these politics um are also creating a, a space with which when, when the majority of people are trying to, to participate in, 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 this, in these political discussions, in, in these political discourses, you are finding that <clears throat> it's either they are confusing or it's either they, <laughs> they, they are deliberately made to ensure that um, a, a certain group, a certain type of people are not in, in, involved in, 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 in the politics of, of the day. So we want to talk about that and we want to, to, to draw a little bit of, of, of parallels. But what I'm going to do is I just want to flight um, a, 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 a what do you call this? A summary of what was happening in in 2020, especially with regards to South African politics. I, I just want you guys to see um, the type of 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 political political um, leaders or political political engagement that has been happening amongst the three leading political parties in, 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 in South Africa. So I just want you to, 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 to listen to this and, so and we'll take it from there. President Cyril Ramaphosa's fight against fraud and corruption in the party is on ice. While officials finalized guidelines for the stepping aside 54th National Conference resolution, it was the subject of a debate at a strained final NEC meeting of the year. We've had to discuss some difficult issues that had the potential to deepen division and exacerbate tensions 
in our movement. It was preceded by Ace Mahashule's supporters burning T-shirts bearing Ramaphosa's face. With the Integrity Commission recommending that Secretary General step aside, ANC officials are tasked with refining the step aside guidelines. The officials will finalize the guidelines that will be applied in instances where members of the organization are formally charged with convicted of or reported to be involved in corruption or other serious crimes. But the battle lines remain drawn. Mahashule says only a special national conference will remove him and no other party leader. It will never happen whilst we are there. It doesn't matter who you are, how important you are, how educated you are, how rich you are, how poor you are. This ANC is an organization of branches of the ANC. That is why I will respect the voices of branches. If branches say I must step aside, I was elected by branches at conference. I will go back to a special conference and the branches must say to me, Comrade Mahashula, step aside. I will then do so because it will be coming from the basic unit of ANC, the branches which voted for us at conference. Nobody and nobody can remove us. While a war is raging in the governing party, the official opposition elected John Steenhuisen as its leader. His tenure got off to a bad start, with the DA being the biggest loser in recent by-elections, losing wards to the ANC, Patriotic Alliance and Freedom Front Plus. For a while, we've lost sight of who we were and what we offer. Clear, principled and decisive leadership. Fortunately, mistakes don't have to be fatal, provided we learn the lessons from them. And over this past year, we've embarked on an exciting journey of introspection to fix that which was broken within our party. Precisely because we had the courage to face up to our own mistakes, I can tell you today that the days of breaking trust with South Africans are well and truly over. <laughs> Under my leadership, the DA will never again turn our back on our core principles. The EFF continued its anti-racism crusade, taking to shopping malls to protest over an advertisement denigrating black women's hair. And supporters descended on Senegal in a stand against what they called white arrogance and racism after white farmers overturned and burnt a police van. We are tired of living like slaves and adopted children in our own country. We will rather die with our boots on. If they want to kill us, let them shoot us now for our own country, for defending our democracy, for defending our own rights. We are prepared to die in defense of our rights, in defense of this freedom. We will never be scared to go anywhere because there is a former apartheid racist general. Those are the ones we want. We don't want peaceful, loving, white South Africans. We don't want those whites who have no problems with white people. When you say to us, don't go to Senegal, because those whites are former apartheid generals, exactly the ones we are looking for. Those are the ones we are looking for. The political year ahead will be consumed by local government elections. While the DA and EFF look at wrestling power from the ANC, the governing party will fight for its survival, with a showdown expected at its National General Council. Sam Kele Masego, SABC News, Johannesburg. How long does it take a man over 50 to lose belly fat? I started seeing results. Now, now we're back. Um... And, and, and what I was trying to show in that, uh, in that, um, in that, in that, in that segment with, um, with those, with those um, uh, moments that were taking place is about uh, the type of, of, 
of, of leading political parties that are in, in, in South Africa currently and the type of engagements that they are engaging uh, or, or the type of discussions or the type of um, politics that they are engaging on. I'm trying to ensure that the, the live video is available on, on Facebook. I see that I'm struggling to get the live feed on Facebook, but it is available on, uh, on, on YouTube. I'm not sure what seems to be the problem. These new setups of, uh, of Facebook seems to be giving us a little bit of a, um, a challenge, but uh, we, are, we are available there on, on, on YouTube and on Twitter. On Twitter, you can you can watch with us, and this seems to be disturbing my my move as I'm trying to as I'm as I'm as I'm trying to because I I see there is a message that says um, we are struggling to add, so I'm going to try and re-edit and and see how how the Facebook is 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 able to draw this problem. Uh, we're having trouble streaming. This may be an issue on Facebook, and it's possible the stream was ended or deleted. We'll keep you trying. Let you know if it is resolved. Please check Facebook if it is uh, it is fine. So what we can do is uh, um, it's it seems like it is fine now um, on 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 the, on the Facebook. I'm not sure what seems to be the problem, um, but. Uh, it seems to be fine on 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 the side of of Facebook. Let me just try again because we see that there is there is something that says that uh, it is on, it is live, but uh, it is not going through. Or maybe we try and um, um, it says we are live, but let let us let us rather change it to change the destination and uh, we will, um, I think we should uh, try and, uh, and, and, and try and, and work around this and just delaying our progress. It is delaying our progress. This, this new Facebook um, um, challenges, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for this. Can you please rather opt for um, checking it on on it's, it's on it's on YouTube? Um, that's where it is it is uh, uh, taking place. Just um, a few minutes. I'll I'll try and uh, ensure that this is uh, is is solved. Let us just give it a a minute or so when it comes to our viewers on, on Facebook. Let us just give it a minute.
once again, and uh, we apologize for that slight, slight problem. We have uh, actually realized that the problem is not with us, but the problem is on, uh, on Facebook. So we've tried even a different profile to try and broadcast the, 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 the broadcast on, uh, on Facebook, but still it is not, um, it is not coming right. So um, let us proceed with the remaining time that we're having. As I was saying that I was asking a few questions around the issue of, don't you find it very problematic or very exhausting the types of politics that are taking place in, 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 in South Africa? And a lot of people begin to therefore don't want to participate in these politics because they are of the view that um, how are they helping us? How are they, uh, they, they are no longer having an interest of the people at heart. For an example, you look at the, 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 the slide video that we were playing, giving a summary of what was happening in 2020. But as we speak now, the very same issues that were being spoken of in 2020 by the, 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 the leading political parties um, in the form of the ANC, in the form of the Democratic Alliance, and in the form of the EFF, you were finding that there, there, there is the same trend that is uh, <clears throat> that is happening. Last 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 week, you 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 sleep, especially for people in certain localities, you sleep with a mayor. The following day, the, the mayor is no longer the mayor. There's another mayor, and the following day, you sleep knowing this mayor, and the following day, there's another mayor, and so there has been this element of frustration and frustrating type of politics that have been um, taking place in, uh, in, in, in South Africa. And therefore, I want to engage on, on, on politics in general. And I'm using this as a way of saying that I'm talking about politics with a capital letter P. And one of the reasons why majority of people tend to not want to participate in politics, as I see and I understand um, them, them is a, is, is, is exactly this point that I'm talking about, that, uh, by the way, these even the decisions that are being made by these politicians or these people who are so-called public representatives are not for the benefit of us as a, as a society, are not for the benefit of uh, <clears throat> the majority of the people that they had promised. Now, I draw the problems of, of um, the current type of politics with a capital letter P, from the introduction of globalization or globalism. And for me, globalism um, um, uh, shows, we must understand that there has always been, historically, there's always been this linkage of societies with the world. There's always been that, that, that linkage. But the, the, um, the formal introduction of globalization and globalism as we understand it today, which is um, underpinned by um, neoliberal principles of market economy um, is the cause of the type of politics that we are seeing, especially in South Africa. Majority of people would ask me, uh, why? Why would you say that is the case? I would then say, look, um, the emergence of uh, let, let, let me give this short historical lesson. You've had a problem of um, the um, these guys who are who um, the, the communist bloc. You you had the the East and Western battles in the sixties um, or in the fifties, which was the Cold War. You had this dynamic of these two societies: the Western, which was represented by capitalism, and the and the Eastern, which was represented by communism. Now, the communist states, which were led mainly by the USSR and the Chinese, um, were the representative of an, an, an alternative, if one were to say, against the, the, the imperialist and uh, the capitalist society of the West. But then the leaders of this USSR I mean, of this communist bloc, which is the USSR, took a decision of taking a more positive, uh, 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 positive participation or a positive interaction with the, the the representatives of the West, which was America at the time. And then, then it meant that the, the the bringing in of Khrushchev as the leader of the USSR brings in this policy 
of um, speaking um, positivity with the West, in, represented by the superpowers at the time, which was America. Now, the Chinese, on the other side, took a position of discarding, uh, I'm saying discarding in inverted commas, the, 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 the USSR. Then, what then transpires is that the 70s, you have then now, and um, also um, the new leader in, in, in China, that also takes a similar position in relation to being part of this, this, this opening up of, of China with the Western world. Already the USSR has led the, the, the charge. And the USSR by the 80s, which has always been, um, which has always been, um, um, which, which has always been leading the, 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 the so-called liberation movement in South Africa as, as one were to say, um, you, 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 so not, not the liberation movement in its entirety, the ANC, yeah, the ANC. Now, when they take, when the USSR takes its position to the Americans, ne, it therefore takes all its alliances, including the African National Congress liberation movement. It takes it to, to, to the USSR. In South Africa, the, the counter ones who are not, at the time there was only one that was counting um, the, 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 the ANC, it was the PAC up until the emergence of Black Consciousness Movement and Azapo at a later stage. So when, when, the, when, when the USSR is going to, um, South, to, to America, it is taking all its alliances with to, to America in, South, in the South African context. But it also did that even in the, in the, uh, in the beyond borders of South Africa. It, it took also those, those alliances. Now, when Gorbachev comes into power, he then makes a deal with the Americans, which leads to this, the, the collapse of the, the Cold War, or the, the Soviet Union, which then opens up a, um, a what you would call Professor Fukuyama, what he then terms a, the, the, the end of history. The end of history in, in, in I think it was uh, um, one of the books that he's writing about the end of history. But during the 80s, you've got the Americans, the, the, the child of Britain having a conversation with its father, which is United Kingdom, bringing them together, having a conversation to introduce what you would call a new type of politics, a politics of, uh, that focuses on, 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 on economy. That is now the introduction of neoliberal, I mean, of liberalism, if, I, if one were to say. Now, in 1980, you've got institutions that are called IMF, you've got institutions that are called World Bank and all of that, and they're established in um, the assistance of the America and the United Kingdom. Then you've got Margaret Thatcher on one side, who is representing the United Kingdom or Britain, and then you've got, um, um, who is this American president? I forgot his name. Um, you've got him representing the Americans. Now, when the Russians or the USSR falls, it falls with all its alliances, and the ANC also falls within that line. And therefore, by the time we get into the 1990s, by default, the, 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 the Congress movement, the ANC, has to align itself. Even though the Chinese also on the opposite side are also have, have taken a, a side of opening up the economy, having those good relations with the Americans. Now, 1990s, you find that um, there is a, a, a CODESA that collapses in South Africa, one, two, and three, and then they decide to have a, a, another conversation where they decided on the constitution and, and, and all the other things that were then taking place which um, they did not, uh, I think they were in Sun City and other things and, 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 and other things. Now, by 1994, remember I said, USSR took with its alliances to the Americans. So the, the, which Americans was representing the, the ideals of globalization and globalism, which under, is underpinned by this uh, uh, um, neoliberal uh, economic system. Né? Now, by the time you get to 1994, um, people are being told about 
the type of society it's going to be a social society people are going to get free water free electricity free education and all that jazz which uh, never transpired but by 1996 in south africa specifically the ideals now of globalism globalization and the neoliberal agenda which was represented by the americans you find it in the new policy economic policy of the anc which is the governing party uh, in the, the, the this growth and um, um, growth and redevelopment uh, program it's the majority of they call it kie i think it's growth and uh, economic uh, redistribution i think it's something like that so you find that type of policy now by accepting that policy as a as a financial or as an economic policy it it was shifting therefore the dynamic of the politics of south africa it was shifting the politics of the country moving from the element of having politics as focusing on the people but politics focusing on the economy you, you understand so you you it's when, when the politics are shifting from the people then you then find the politics that are then focusing on money so whatever type of decision making that you are going to be making it or you are going to be embarking on it is the decision that must always be influenced by money so um, this this is how then I'm, I'm drawing globalization and globalism that has affected the type of politics with the capital letter p in um, in in south africa so if you've got a view or a comment that you would wish to make with me i would love to have you uh, sending me the comment there on youtube and on, on on twitter unfortunately on facebook we are unable to to broadcast um because of the problems that we are seeing but we can get your comments on on youtube facebook and twitter we are discussing or we are having a conversation about the type of politics that uh, uh, we have then uh, seen in our in our society i'm talking about south africa to be specific now because of that globalism, globalization, and the type of politics that were brewed from this, this, this Margaret Thatcher, and uh, was it what was this guy? I, I just, I, just remind me, please. And th they were brewed from that that type of globalization, globalism uh, that was uh, came especially in the beginning of the 1980s. It then manifests itself in the way that people are even participating and understanding politics to this day. Now, look at the type of coalitions that are taking place in South Africa. Last week, you've had, uh, in Ekuruleni, um, you, there, there was a, oh, two weeks ago, you had a, a vote of no confidence against the mayor, a, a DA mayor, and there was a discussion that was taking place between the political participants or polit political parties that were taking place there. And all of a sudden, um, there was a, um, a re-election of the very same person whom they, there was a vote of no confidence over. In Johannesburg, you had had a similar situation where there was a vote of no confidence against a, a, a sitting mayor by a, 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 in a motion that was said to have been submitted by the PAC. But two weeks later, the, the, the mayor is reinstated. So, this leaves you, this goes back to my discussion earlier when I was saying one minute you're sleeping with the mayor the following, May, the, the following uh, day, the mayor that you knew that you slept understanding that is a mayor, the following day you wake up, that particular person is not a mayor. Now, again, again, a day later, the mayor is no longer the mayor or the mayor is the mayor that was not the mayor. So you begin to have this type of politics that are, are, are very problematic are very confusing at the same time but also you when you interrogate further you you see that there is there is an accusation that is coming from organizations like the democratic alliance which they want to make themselves as moral people when they are not you've got organizations like the actp which represent the right wingers in this country as a, as if they are they are hiding under the african christian democratic party's uh, emblem which that they are not and <clears throat> you've got all these these elements that that are taking place and everybody's accusing the other one of selling the the votes or of selling uh, and of, of being bought now in all of these instances you had find that uh, um money has exchanged hands 
and, and therefore the definition of politics has then moved from being defined as what do people want, but has been defined from the, from the element of who has got the, the, the biggest money. Look at the accusation that was made against Qatar, the, 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 the Islamic state of Qatar in relation to the issue of um, this World Cup 2022. You've got the same situation. There's been accusation, yet there's no evidence, but there's been accusation that uh, Qatar did not win the bid on merit, ne? and they won the bid based on the money exchanges that have taken place. And therefore, the, 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 the type of politics, sport politics or soccer politics that took place, they were influenced by uh, what you would refer to. They were, they were influenced by, by money. So this is where then the, the, this problem of the, the, the type of politics that I'm talking about, the politics of uh, uh, with, with a capital letter, with a capital letter P, they are undergirded by, 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 by money. They are undergirded by, by the so-called the love of economy. Now, even there, you find it even in the ANC, when the ANC is talking about um, its national congresses, there was an accusation against the election of Cyril Ramaphosa as the president of the ANC that there was a lot of money that was uh, put in place into a Nasrek, was Nasrek, I think it was Nasrek, Nasrek conference, which elected Cyril Ramaphosa as the president of the ANC, which led to him being elected as um, as uh, the the president of South Africa, even the campaign of Ngozi Zuma, there was also money, but I guess it was not it was not enough to win over. And majority of people in the ANC they have accepted that 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 conference was uh, driven by money. Even in the small parties, then you are having the same the same problem where money is making the rounds. Money is defining how these congresses have. Uh, um, are taking place. There, 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 there is also the issue of uh, you, you look at even in the in the EFF there was a claim that the election of uh, its secretary general, uh, I think it's Marshal Lamini, that he is brought in because he's into business in Guazulu There is also the accusation around the Congress, the, the the Congress that was held in August in the PAC that the type of decisions that were made pre and post that particular Congress were influenced by the monies that are taking place around these municipal councils that are, are, are taking place. Look at what has transpired in Nelson Mandela Bay. You, you find that one minute there, 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 there is a, 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 an ANC mayor, the next minute there is no ANC mayor, there is a DA mayor. And all of these, these things that are taking place that are taking place within the council, there has never been a group of a political party that would then say, okay, you voted for us in 2019, you voted for us in 2020, you voted for us in 2021, whether it was local government or not. But now that we have found ourselves in the situation where there is a vote of no confidence against our mayor, which or against our public representative that you have brought for us, what do we do? There has been no consultation no consultation of the people, no consultation of the, the constituencies. On, under the impression that, no, we are in a representative democracy or in a representative system, that is the type of politics with a capital letter P. So whatever people are thinking, it's neither here nor there because they are not providing money. That's, what, that's the type of politics that we are engaged in in, 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 in South Africa. And it is this reason that you are finding this confusion of the type of coalition politics that are working one day, the following day, they are, they are not working. You, you, you can go to even these political parties and ask them when they get into these coalitions, have they consulted their constituencies? No, they have not. They would lie and say they have, uh, they have consulted, but that's not the case. It's not true. They are not consulting them. They consult the ones that have got the money. And the money itself is the one that defines the politics of the day. And those politics are therefore the politics with the capital letter P that I'm mean, referring to. Now, if you look at the ANC itself, it took that, um, um, we, we always say in, in the academy, the global north, 
understanding of things. So they took the definition of what is politics from the Americans and brought it into the southern tip of the continent. And therefore, when people are engaging now in politics, they're engaging using the paradigms of um, the Americans, using the paradigms of liberal democracy, using the paradigms of uh, representative democracy. And all of these things, they seem to be not working entirely uh, because the, the, the type of politics that they produce are not context-based. Instead, it's like a carbon copy of a, of, a, of, a, of a group of people or of a society being brought into, um, into, into, into South Africa. So these are the problems that therefore you are seeing in these, in these councils. So when your public representatives are going to work in those councils and changing and chopping and changing each other, voting of no confidence against the vote of no confidence, they have not spoken to anybody or they have not spoken to the constituencies. They are speaking amongst themselves, which is what globalism, globalization, and, uh, and, um, um, and market economy has done. It has created a group of people who are at the top who make decisions for other people. And then they say, those decisions must be accepted by everybody else. You've got Peter Dutoy, he's writing, he's written a book about the ANC billionaires, which has been created post the 1996 year policy, uh, the, the, the economic policy. And those people um, have, have decided to be part and parcel. Those people have decided to be the decision makers of the type of politics that the ANC must, uh, must be embarking on. You understand? You go into the EFF, um, there were a group of people that were um, discarded in the EFF for the very same reason that um, probably they were not towing the line of this so-called market economic uh, type of, of, of politics. You, you understand? And, and all of these dynamics which have, uh, have been um, adopted from somewhere and been brought in, 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 in South Africa have then had a negative impact in the type of politics that we see and that we have in, in South Africa. What also this does is uh, it gives out, uh, sorry, what, what also this does is uh, it provides for an opportunity for your, uh, your so-called public representatives to be viable, to be bought, to sell themselves for decision making. They, they would then sell themselves. They've got price tags, they've got money. Uh, for me to, to vote in this way, give me 5 million. Uh, for me to vote in this way, give me 3 million. For us to be part of this coalition, give us 2 million. And none, none of these people are talking about, um, okay, maybe let's go and find out from our constituency, how much money must we, we, we ask for us to be part of a coalition. Nobody does that because um, the people are seen to be moneyless, worthless, but uh, those who've got money, they are seen to be the determinants of um, the type of uh, politics that must be in, 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 in the society. So <clears throat> everything that you are seeing in every political party, let me tell you, in, in every political party in South Africa, irrespective of it is a small Anyana party, or it is a big Anyana party, number one, number two, number three, all of them, with no exception, they are all uh, under a spell of this um, globalization, globalism, uh, and, and monetary orientation of politics. There's no exception. Even those ones who would want to claim that they are more revolutionary than the others, they are equally in the same trappings. Look at what is happening with the EFF. Some people can't make sense of why would the EFF vote with the, the Democratic Alliance? And, and some people will be like, no, but the PAC has also voted with the Freedom Front Plus. And uh, the, some would say, but the AC, what is it? The ACDP has been in a coalition with the um, UDM and Freedom Front Plus and Action SA. So you see all of these dynamics that do not make sense. Even, even um, um, 
from the principles of the founding documents of all these organizations. Look at the founding documents of the, the EFF, look at the founding documents of the ANC, look at the founding documents of the Democratic Alliance, from Frank Plus, the PAC, UDM, all of them. You, you, you find it very strange. And I hope that um, um, there would be, even if it's a small Anyana party, that would pop up and um, give the people of this country, especially the majority, which are are uh, black people in South Africa, gives them the respect that they deserve. Um, respect in relation to whenever we are participating on something, it should not be driven by the, the monetary value or the survival in monetary value in, the, uh, in that particular political organization. But it must be driven by the needs and the necessities of the people whom which, whom which have voted for them. Now, because the, the, the South African political elites have taken a globalistic, I mean, a globalization or a globalism type of politics, which is, is, has, has embedded on, on, on money, they're struggling to keep up with one group in South Africa, which you are calling the Afrikaners, um, the, the Dutch descendants, they are struggling to keep up with that. Because from 1948, a political project was uh, embarked on by the, the Afrikaners and Afrikaner Dome group and all of those uh, that were involved. They created a, a machinery, a political decision which manifested itself in an apartheid ideology. And they build an economic base for the Afrikaner speaking people. Now, those Afrikaner speaking people, they've got an economic power that they are able to utilize, even to buy the very same <laughs> political parties that were anti apartheid. They buy them because they've got the economic power, they've got the economic ability to, to buy them. And also these now who were so-called uh, uh, liberation movements, they don't have the, the, the economic power. They are easily selling themselves. Can you see the, the adverse of this problem? Afrikaners in South Africa have got the money because there was a political project that was done to ensure that they are set for life. So in, in, in engaging in the politics, even to this day, it's easy for them to go and buy <laughs> these ones who do not have a political, uh, I mean, an economic base. They only have the, 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 the political base, which is uh, uh, the political parties that they are leading. So it's easy. It's easy for these, these black ones to sell themselves because they don't have money. They will sell themselves. And also it's easy for the Africaners and other uh, Europeans to buy these black ones because the black ones do not have the money. So that is the adverse of the problem of this so-called politics with a capital letter P, which I argue that uh, these politics, they draw much of their essence from globalization and globalism as we understand it uh, when it was developing in the, 19, in the 1980s. You, you, you get, I hope my argument does make sense, uh, does make sense here. And, and, and secondly, um, there, there, there is also a, a point that most people don't want to talk about and they are talking about. Uh, I stopped supporting South African football in 2008 and, and I, don't, I don't subscribe to South African football. I don't like it. I know that uh, um, a lot of South Africans, especially uh, black people, were, uh, there was a group that was happy this weekend. There was a group that was unhappy. Another team was beating another team four nil. The other one was beaten one nil, and all that jazz. You see, one of the things that I had understood and I had picked up um, in in the in the World Cup 2008, which uh, I was absolved about, there was a matter of Pierre Issa causing or scoring three own goals against uh, France. He was a a a a, a, a backline defender of Bafana Bafana. He scored three, three own goals there. At that time, th those own goals did not make sense to me. I knew there was something untoward around that. And it has been proven, there has been a proof that by in 2008, 
in 2008, there has already been a process that took place in 1998 already, in a World Cup of 1998, that South Africa was promised a World Cup by Sepp Blatter in 2010 for 24 for for whenever, which uh, culminated in um, um, the 2010 World Cup. What happened was at the time there was um, um, the president, Safa president, I think it was Molife, President Molife. He was brought in to come and um, 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 influence. The, the associations or the CAF in, in, in Africa to influence them to voting for Seplata to become the president. You understand? And a promise was made to SAFA, which is um, an extension of the African National Congress, that they must then pay up, I think, about the money of 10 million or some sort. Um, and, and, and with that payment, it made it possible for one of the World Cups to be hosted in South Africa, and that World Cup was in 2010. And um, the, with the investigations that were taking place, including the Confederations Cup that preceded the 2010 World Cup, there was money that was uh, um, going in the hands of these so-called uh, soccer bosses to ensure that uh, Bafana Bafana wins that Confederations Cup, whether it's Confederations Cup or whatever you call it. By that time, I was having no interest in, uh, in, in, in South African football, whether it was a national or it was a uh, um, um, the PSL or NSL, whatever you want to call it. I don't have any interest of it. But what I know is that because of this globalism and this globalization uh, of politics, with a capital letter P, these things affected even the sports of South Africa. They affected even the education of South Africa. They affected all the other societies. Even the World Cup in 2010 could have been as a result of a certain money that was uh, moving around because um, the, 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 the leading organization and the leading government in South Africa had then accepted this globalization or globalism of defining politics. And therefore, uh, even the economic policy was then influenced by this uh, globalization. So um, what, what you are then seeing, even in parliament, even in councils, even in, 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 in local municipalities, every decision, even in conferences, as we were, we were talking about it last week with the uh, um, project. Even in conferences, you are finding the very same, the very same problem. Now, the question remains, and, and people are asking, how did we get to this? And this discussion and this conversation was trying to, to, to say that, do not be surprised of the type of politics that you are seeing, because all these politics that you are seeing in South Africa, all these politics that you are seeing in, in the councils, all these politics that you are seeing in the coalitions, all these politics that you are seeing in Ekuruleni, the politics that you are seeing in the Joburg Metro, the politics that you are seeing in Nelson Mandela Bay, Etekwini, and every other place, all of them, they are politics that are influenced by money. And people who have voted for these political parties to be part and parcel of these councils and represent them. They are never considered. If you think I'm lying, you can you can ask me now, I can tell you now, the people of Nelson Mandela Bay, have they been consulted when there was a vote of no confidence by, by the ANC, did they, I mean, by the, by the DA? No, they have not. Did the people of uh, Joburg cons were consulted by, by the PAC when they raised a vote of no confidence against the DA mayor? No, they were not. Did the people of Ekuruleni were consulted by the ANC when they raised a vote of no confidence? No, they were not. They don't consult anybody because they don't care about the, the people. And now they will argue to then say, no, we are in a representative democracy and therefore we are representing the people because there's no service delivered. That is not true. It's just a lie that the politicians and the political elites, they use as a leverage to justify their corrupt and uh, greedy decision making. For, for, for an example, why would you want to, 
People of Egurulem did not vote for the ANC. They did not give the ANC the power to govern. Why do you want to get into governance uh, um, um, through the back door using the, the, the coalitions? The people of, of Joburg did not vote for the PAC to be uh, in government of, of that. Why do you want to, 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 to be in, in government through the back door? Why? why? Why don't you focus on building um, a stronger political base that is going to take over? Because you cannot implement anything if you are constantly going to be in a coalition with a people who have got different cultural background, different historical uh, background, different objectives, and different constituencies. You are never going to go anywhere. There's no answer to that. That is why the mayor of the DA focuses mainly on ensuring that the, the service delivered is with the white communities because they don't care about the black communities. They don't care. But the people voted for, for them. You, you understand? They voted for them. Now, if they have voted for them, why did they vote for them? There are two things that could have transpired. Also, money could have been the reason. Or two is that people have gotten fed up with the stealing of money by those who have been in government and in governance for as long as we can remember. So one of the things that we must always understand and we should not be surprised about when they are taking place is that uh, um, this sleeping and waking up, sleeping and waking up, sleeping and waking up with the different officials in the councils, the, it's, it's just the politics of money. And it goes even deeper to, um, uh, it's, sometimes you talk about these commissions that are taking place in South Africa, a lot of commissions, inquiries, and all of that. All of them, they are also influenced by money. There's nobody who can say is a judge uh, in South Africa that does not um, 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 rely solely on, on this influence because the globalization and globalism have influenced how people understand um, the progress of, of the society, how people even implement the law. Yes, there are those judges whom you can say uh, kudos to them because they are standing their ground. But I can tell you the majority of the situation that we are finding ourselves in in South Africa through these coalitions and the type of politics that are taking place, it is only because there's money that is, uh, has, 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 made, has made the rounds. Now, um, uh, earlier I was asking, when I, when I was asking you guys to join this conversation and watch, I was asking, how did we get to this point? What type of politics are we engaging in? Why are young people also having um, this called, I call it political apathy uh, in South Africa? It is be precisely because of this reason that what money has done it has created a group of people who are caring less about anybody else but themselves. And therefore, young people uh, have taken a decision to say, leave those people, let them be part of that thing, and I'm not going to be uh, involving myself in the confusion that I'm not even benefiting financially from. It's not a good idea. Young people, I'm telling you now, it's not a good idea to, to not be part of, of these processes, because even the price of bread in South Africa is politics and in the world is politics. The price of fuel is politics. Even the price of data, which you love so much to use, it is, it is politics. So, but what, what, what becomes an important element is you need to understand why are these politics the way they are? Why are the decisions that are being taken in South Africa, the type of people that are elected, the type of people that are cast away in, um, in, 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 in in our political discourse. Why, what, what type of people are those? And why are they cast away, those people? Why are we having a group of people that are constantly being recycled into the political leadership when actually they have been part and parcel of, of, of the problem? So you need to understand that it's not you. There's nothing wrong that you as the society entirely have done. There's nothing wrong that you have done. It is the political system that has been hijacked. And if you want to understand deeply how this hijacking of a political system has taken place, go and read 
one of the judgments by the Supreme Court of, uh, uh, of America, when they had adopted and accepted that uh, the, the pumping up of money into political campaigns is part of a democratic process. So once you understand that judgment, which became a detrimental to democracy, to politics in America and in the world, then you will be able to understand why this is happening. One example, in South Africa, you've got Vodacom giving out money to political parties in South Africa under the name um, uh, Enhancing Democracy. You've got uh, organizations that are running away from tax and do tax evasion that give money to these political parties in South Africa under the name of um, Enhancing Democracy. You've got political parties that were funded um, by individuals who then become prominent leaders in, in, in the political society and in our society as a whole that fund the political parties. And you've got the, the, the EFF being funded by the very same Doji people uh, who are in Stellenbosch, you've got the ANC funded by the very same Doji Democratic Alliance, uh, the PAC, UDM, all of them. You, you, you've got all of these political parties in South Africa that respond to these people who are at the back pumping in pumping in money. I saw a video of uh, Dr. Makosi Koza from KwaZulu Natal. She was talking about Action SA and she was saying that Action SA is just having a, a, a front of puppets. That's what she was saying. I'm quoting it. It has got the fronting of puppets behind it. All the people who are pulling the strings are white people. It proves exactly what I was saying earlier to say, because they, these ones that are black in South African politics, they do not have the economic base, the strength, economic base and economic strength to make, to define politics, to define a position in politics. And therefore, those who've got money who are not uh, uh, political leaders, they take the money and come and buy these ones who do not have a economic base. And these ones who don't have an economic base, they can sell themselves in the process to, 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 to present a type of politics that you would then see, which is a politics with a capital letter, a capital letter C, I mean, capital letter P in, uh, in, in South Africa. So all that I'm trying to say, all that I was uh, trying to present, and I hope that my argument does bring about a conversation as we go as we go forward, um, and and I would like to hear you making your inputs and uh, and your comments and make some critics here on Point the Politic on YouTube, make those critics and also uh, even on Twitter make those critics against these arguments that I'm raising uh, because it's always good to 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 be shown the blind spots of uh, of my own arguments. You can also send. Uh, your, your your views and reviews of the work that you are doing on Facebook at Point the Politic, on uh, Instagram, including on TikTok. Because sometimes when we make these arguments, it does not mean that we've got or we know everything. But we are we are bringing in ideas that are going. We are hoping that are going to help majority of people get an understanding of these. Uh, politics of, uh, of the day. Utandulwe Tukantanga, Umsebin's work every Sunday is to ensure that there is something that we bring and there's something that we are able to engage on politically. And to, to have a clear understanding of the politics of the day, it makes it easy for each and every other person to be able to make <clears throat> a, an informed decision. So what did I say in this episode? I said, um, the type of politics with a capital letter P that we have in South Africa, they draw their historical uh, uh, value or historical um, narrative or historical understanding from globalization and globalism. And that globalization and globalism has got its principles on neoliberal uh, on market economic values, which is now is the one that defines the type of politics which South Africa began to adopt in its economic policy in 1996. And because those type of politics 
have then been uh, firstly utilized by the governing ANC. They also affected other political parties in the political spectrum in South Africa. And they manifest those politics, the capital letter P, influenced by money, they manifest themselves in the coalitions that are taking place in South Africa. And I made an example of Akuruleni, city of Joburg, Nelson Mandela Bay, and other uh, dysfunctional uh, councils, city of Tswane, all of them. They are nonsensical councils. They are not going to work because the coalitions are not based on honesty and truth, but they are based on who has got the highest, I mean, the, the, the largest sum of money. And they are also based on who wants to sell at a cheaper price than the other one. And I then said, the political elites in South Africa, especially the black ones, they do not have an economic foundation, economic base. It makes it easy for them to sell themselves, to give themselves tickets that can be bought. And I also said that the Africaners who were part and parcel of a political project by the Burde Bond through its ideology of apartheid and, uh, and from 1948, it provided a space for them to have an economic uh, uh, strength. And they use that economic strength to buy these who do not have an economic strength, which are political leaders. And those political leaders, they do not have the interest of the people the majority of the people who are black in South Africa, they only have their interest at heart. And I also argue that these political parties who are raising points of no confidence against each other in the councils, they have not consulted anybody whatsoever when they make these things. It's only their decisions that they are taking amongst themselves. And I then say all of this is characterized as the politics with a capital letter P, because globalism, globalization, the global north has defined the type of politics to be this type of politics that are politics that are focusing on money, politics that are using money and selling uh, the, the votes and buying is of votes and, and all of that with the, without the consideration of how does those decisions affect the people who have voted for them. So this is my, my entirety of my thesis that I was presenting in this uh, conversation. And I hope that uh, it has made uh, or it has provided you with some element of uh, <clears throat> information and knowledge. And I hope that uh, you guys can be able to share your views with me and ensure that we are uh, uh, um, embarking further on these types of conversation. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope to see you again next week. And we are apologizing for the problems of Facebook. These are technological issues and we are unable to solve them for now. Hopefully by next week, we would have solved them. But on YouTube, we are available. On Twitter, we are available. Go and make sure that you are part and parcel of that conversation. Thank you very much. See you next week. Bye-bye.